Well, here we are. Thursday, November 10th, 2022. I'm Larissa. In my video diary. So, Brody got did yesterday. Are you handsomest boy in the world? Are you handsomest boy in the world? In the whole wide world? Come over here. Come over here. Let's see how handsome you are. Brody. That stinker. They didn't have to muzzle him or restrain him or nothing. Nothing. I told him yesterday morning before we left, I said, you're going to meet a new friend today. And... He did. So. I'm so happy he's so clean. But I can't believe it. She was brushing him and washing him. And and he is just so handsome. Brody. 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 Come over here and show everybody how handsome you are. It's just no. Nope. No. Don't tell anybody I'm handsome. <laughs> oh, He's Brody. handsome. Oh. He's so handsome. Oh. Look at him. Oh. Oh. oh, He's all clean and soft and he smells nice. Oh my goodness. He's so clean. Domesticated brood. Huh? Yeah. And the squirrels didn't see, buddy. The squirrels didn't see it happen. <laughs> the squirrels didn't see it. The squirrels have no idea. <laughs> they have no idea that Brody went to the salon. He's so handsome. What a good Brody. What a good boy. He says, look, daddy's face fur is the same color as my face fur. <laughs> I look just like daddy. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, what a baby. Yeah, he's so good. He's so good. So I don't know like why he's such a stinker or why he doesn't like for me to brush him when he so thoroughly enjoyed his time at the salon. So yeah, thank you, Animal House in Santa Cruz. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, yeah. Margot did some magic. Magic, magic, magic. And I was just, I was so worried, you know, like, I told her, I said, he's got anxiety around the brush and I don't even know. And yeah, so next time he needs, he needs some, uh, some primping, some, some, some pampering. We'll definitely go back to see Margot. Yes, we will. Margot and her magic. Oh. Oh, I feel like there's some rain coming again. I'll have to look at the weather forecast and see. But, oh my God. That heartburn in the middle of the night. Oh. And I didn't even have, we didn't even have spicy dinner. I baked tilapia with a bunch of bell peppers. And that's probably what it is, bell peppers. I'm getting old now. I'm getting old now. Bell peppers are getting me heartburn. Bell peppers. Oh my gosh. Brody. Brody, are you the best boy in the whole world? Are you? Yeah, you are. So handsome. So he feels so silky and soft. <gasps> yeah. What a good boy. I'm so happy for him. Like, I know, all of that fur, it was just coming out. The, uh, his undercoat, Border Collies have this undercoat. And it was just, it was like, just like sitting in with his fur and was matting in his fur. And it didn't look comfortable. And his butt was all itchy and he was always wanting butt scratches. But then you would scratch and the furs would come off in your hand and he'd like flip out. There was so much fur on the floor. There was so much fur on the floor. But I have to say, you know, 
since he had the thyroid problem start. Like, there for a while, he was losing his fur. But he's doing so much better now. He's doing so much better. He's back to looking looking nice and svelte. And his furs are all beautiful and shiny. And he's back to being himself. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, I have something exciting going on today. But I even like talking about exciting things to me for me because like that's like a way to guarantee that somebody will fuck it up right so but we'll see we will see won't we we will see so might have a whole bunch of interesting good news for me which would be nice for a change right i don't know if to me it would be nice for a change uh, other people might be like, oh, fuck you, Larissa. You don't want anything nice for you. Oh. He got his nails done and his foot's trimmed. And he just looks so handsome. I can't stand it. Margo, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. And so, so reasonably priced. So reasonably priced. Oh, my God. I would have paid you 70 bucks. It was 70 bucks is how much it was. I would have paid like 150. I would have. I wanted to cry. I was so happy for him. And he was he was a good boy getting in the car. Like last couple times we've gotten in the car, he's been he's been a good boy about it. He hasn't been so anxious. Um so he was, but he was a real good boy in the car and he sat in the back and he didn't try jumping up front and he stuck his nose out the window and he didn't drool everywhere and he was calm and he wasn't all antsy and flying all over and oh my good boy. Handsomest boy. Handsomest boy. Mm. And he smells like cedar chips. He smells like cedar so, Margo, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot thank you enough. Oh, my gosh. Animal House. Animal House. I called. Like, cause I had gone in a couple places, and some places were like, oh, we're not taking any new clients. And, oh, cause I, I was like, do you work with difficult dogs? I mean, Brody's not mean. He's not mean. He's just got some special needs, you know? And Border Collies, Border Collies are a very challenging breed, right? Like, they they are not an inherently aggressive animal. Like, it's not the kind of, it's not the same kind of thing as, like, a pit bull or whatever. But, like, he's really gentle with, with smaller dogs when he's around other dogs, smaller dogs. It's, but when it comes to, like, bigger dogs... He tries to herd them like it, border collies. They're, they're, they're not, they don't have the, the muscle mass, but they got the brains and they can be a couple times. I've had them at the dog park and there were people there that had very, very well trained pit bull or, 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 or pit bull mixes. And I was really grateful. And we, I, we ended up, I ended up leaving because I was like, Brody, you were going to get yourself bit because he was, he was hurting them. And this dog, this dog was like, are you kidding? You know, this dog is like, you realize that, you know, I could beat your ass, but you never know with Border Collies because they got that trick that they do, you know, they do that flip. And there's a couple people, like I said, there's been a couple people that he's, he's, he's crept up on, like he was going to, he was going to try to flip them. So they, they, uh, they crouch and they do like a little crawl and then they get up under you, under the, under their opponent and they flip them over their back that's what they do and and uh, Brody Brody and his special needs Brody Brody are you so are you super smart buddy he is he understands complex sentences he does 
not just command like individual word commands he understands sentences and he understands like <sighs> he's too smart for his own good sometimes but I'm just really grateful really really grateful I finished one of the two jackets I, I was working on yesterday and I wrote some of my letters a couple more letters I'd like to write I think but they can wait they can wait they can wait Yeah, but the jacket I finished, it was an upcycle. So it was a garment I had made that I didn't, that didn't fit me right. Right. And so, you know, you get patterns and the, the fabric wasn't super expensive or anything um, when I bought it, but it was cute. Right. Um, but I don't want to waste it. Right. I got in this pattern. It's hard because my boobs are disproportionately large to my for my body, and so it's it, it's it can be challenging fitting uh, commercial patterns, right? Because they're made to a size, a very specific size standard. And if I were to make like for me to make a garment um, from a standard pattern. The pattern either has to be designed in such a way for people who are shaped like me, which is challenging to find, <laughs> or I need like a size 16 or 20 across the boobs to a size 10 around my waist. It's, it's a huge disparity. It's a huge disparity. Like I need 16 to 20 across my boobs and a 10 on my arms. And it's very, very hard to ease a sleeve into that wide of a, of a, of a change, which is why, you know, I, I was, why I've been making my own garments and why my garments are designed the way that they're designed because they can fit a number of sizes, right? It's one size fits many, my clown suits or one size fits many. They're kind of adjustable, right? But I like to go by. So anyway, I'd gotten this pattern and it was just a real simple kind of like jumper kind of thing. And uh, the way that it was made, it was, it was reversible. So, so, uh, and it was like kind of made like a folding apron and it tied underneath and then on the top as well. And then you wore a t-shirt or something underneath it. But the front <laughs> was like eight inches shorter than the back and it looked ridiculous on me. And I just hadn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to futz with it. And I didn't like, really like the way that, that it laid across my chest anyway. So anyway, I upcycled, I upcycled that garment into, um, into this jacket and it's cute. It's real cute. I don't like wasting fabric, you know? And then the other one that I'm working on is another painted one and it's almost finished. So I just have the underarm seams and the binding to do on it. It's painted with um, American Nightshade. So it's a little berry. This little berry that grows out here is a little wild edible berry. I did a cartoon for a textile for textile design, right? A while back. One it's one of those. And I painted and I've I've painted it. I've transferred that that uh motif onto this jacket and it's really pretty and it's and it's 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 dyed the, the um canvas. The canvas is tie dyed. And then I have antique silk ribbon. Antique silk ribbon for I'm using for the for the um for the bias. It's pretty Yeah. 
I'm hoping this weekend to be able to go make it one of the days to the um, Goat Hill uh, Antique Fair. I'm hoping. I want to take one of these jackets to show Claudia from Peacock Collection what I've been doing because I buy a lot of I buy a lot of materials from her. Um, she has a really really amazing collection and she's a really great eye for stuff and um, so I buy a lot of materials from her and I'd like to show her. She asked me she asked me she's asked me a number of times what do you do with this stuff because like I buy very specific kinds of things, <laughs> you know. She's like, what do you do with this stuff? I'm like oh bunch of stuff. So I'm going to take her one of these jackets to show her what I do, what I've been doing with them. Because she might then um, have, you know, show me other stuff that she has, you know. Might make her bring something out. Because she's got a real big collection and she doesn't bring everything out all the time. And sometimes she does a private. Last time she ha did, a, did a private trunks uh, trunk show, I wasn't able to make it. And I didn't, I didn't email her. So I'm hoping she's going to be at the Goat Hill. Yeah, she's a really good vendor. Really, really good vendor. So I'm hoping to be able to get there. Goat Hill Antique Fair. It's good. It's a good one. It is. And a bunch of, there's a bunch of ladies that come up from LA, come up from, from Southern California, not just LA, but other places in Southern California and stuff that they make up. Last, uh, last, last time I bought these little shorts, there's this lady, she was making these little shorts, these little like tennis shorts, you know? out of tablecloths, these, these vintage tablecloths, and, uh, oh gosh, uh, the ones I got, they got fruit all over them, you know, these little cute little shorts, they, she she's, does real nice piping and stuff on them, they're super cute, and they weren't, they were really reasonably priced too, they were like 45 bucks for these cute little shorts, I mean, it's a simple pattern, but they fit nice, and uh, they're super cute, yeah, I like roller skating in those little shorts, little roller skating shorts, oh, I got her card down there too. Maybe if she's there, show her the jackets I'm making too. Oh, that was gotta be careful. It was still my ideas. <laughs> There's another lady that sometimes at the Goat Hill Fair, and she has some really interesting stuff. Like she collects some really macabre kind of things. She's got a lot of like, um, she has a big collection of antique French hair jewelry, reliquary stuff. And it's, super creepy stuff, but it's really, really cool. And she's real interesting. And she knows, all, she knows her history and her art history. I like talking to her. There was one lady there last time I was there. I was trying to buy um, fabric off of her. It was this big, beautiful piece of lace and she wouldn't sell it to me. She's like, I'm like, okay. I get a hat. I'm like, how much is this? She's like, she's like, I don't take credit cards. I'm like you got a credit card machine right there. She just didn't want to sell it to me. I don't know why. German lady. She had a German accent. Real thick German accent. She didn't want to sell it to me. Like, whatever. No. Oh. I don't like doing craft shows. I used to do this with my jewelry. And it's just like, schlep all your crap. And I like carrying that all in and setting it all up. And... Uh, it was never worth it. I never, ever recouped my, my entry fees, right? Most I sold at a trunk show it was one year. I, I, I did the gifty trunk show at the Crucible in Oakland. I did that a number of years. And one year I sold three pieces. One year. It was, a, it was two pair of earrings and, and, a, and a ring. The most I ever sold. And I had a lot of my jewelry designs knocked off. I did. I had a bunch of my jewelry designs knocked off. It made me so angry. The, it was And it was pieces that I, that I had sold. I, I was doing, I had a series called Bubbles. And um, I sold, I think I sold a necklace too. I may have sold a, I sold a necklace and two pair of earrings. I, I there was there was I had a bunch of them, and then after that, that design, my design, was I saw it all over the place, like even like in Target and stuff. And I was just like, really. But people wouldn't buy, didn't really want to buy stuff from me, kind of thing. And I, I had tried getting manufacturing; it was so expensive, and I didn't have. 
Saks Fifth Avenue and Nima Marcus both were interested in carrying, had both shown, I had, I had approached them with, and, and they had, they were both, they had both told me the same thing. They said that they needed, they needed a two week manufacturer turnaround. Well, I couldn't manufacture that. So I had to look for somebody because they said, oh, we can, we can do limited edition by like a hundred pieces. Well, I certainly couldn't, you know, like I had my originals and they said, they said, oh, this one, this one, and this one, but I didn't have anybody to manufacture for me and I didn't have the money to front for it. And I went to go look at it because, so like one piece that they were interested in, uh, it was, it was one of the spring blossoms pieces. I had a series called spring, spring blossoms. And I've seen this series now, now knocked off all over the place, cheap enamel crap. And not that all enamel is crap, but the, the stuff that I, the knockoffs I've seen have been cheap enamel crap. Um, <clears throat> So I found a manufacturer, a small, a small house manufacturer in San Francisco, and it was going to, it was going to cost me like between 600 and $800 a piece to have them manufactured. Right. And that was if I sourced the materials and I just didn't have the money to front at front at that time. Like I was barely covering my studio rent and I wasn't able, like nobody wanted to help me out. Went to my family. They're like, find a job, Larissa. I'm like, I am working. I was teaching art at the same time. No, but nobody wanted, nobody wanted to support me in that. Like I had to get into a gallery or whatever. And I was in the gallery and metal art gallery. And that woman didn't want to carry my work anymore because I had an Arab last name. She broke my contract and that was after I had paid 10 grand for an ad campaign in San Francisco magazine, which mentioned her, her location plus this, this other boutique on Hay in Hayes Valley that was there at the time. Menovos. Menovos was a nice lady. What was, what was the name of her? Finn. That was the name of, of, of her boutique, Finn. I sold a, I sold a big necklace out of there, out of her place. The place was, that, that necklace was like, I had sold it for like 950 bucks. It was, it was big. It was a forged. I had forged. It was a forged piece, the a forged neck cuff with like all of these hammer faceted leaves all over it. And then I had, uh, it, it had, um, oh, faceted dyed, these dyed faceted pearls. They were really cool. These big, there were these big freshwater pearls that had been faceted and dyed. They were really cool. They were really, really cool. And they were this really unctuous, like, they looked like grapes, right? They looked, the, the piece was like just dripping with berries. It was, it was so, that was from the Petals and Pearls. Was that Sticks and Stones? It was Petals and Pearls. No, that was from Sticks and Stones. A series called Sticks and Stones. I have one piece, I have one or two, two pieces from Sticks and Stones left. I gave so many things away. I've given away thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars of jewelry because like I made all this jewelry and then I just didn't want it sitting around, right? I had made it for people to wear. Nobody ever wanted to buy it. They wanted to buy like earrings that cost me a hundred bucks to make and took, took, three days to fabricate people wanted to pay 25 bucks for, right? Oh, was that cast? No. Hand fabricated. It was always just so disheartening. And Metal Arts Guild was so snobby. They treated me like I was trash. They really did. I had nothing to offer. And I had done that. I had volunteered and as the, I had been the guild letter editor for like three years. That was so much work. That was so much work. I mean, it was, the publication only went out to 800 people, but you know, I, I, I did the whole thing, right? I was never really part of their club. I was never invited to their, you know, other than, other than the mag events, I was never invited to anybody, any of their, any of their parties or 
never really friends with any of them. I guess Allison and I were kind of, we're, we're, we're friends, but even that, like, like she and I never, we hardly even spoke, you know? And I felt, I often felt like it was just convenience. No, oh, I've always felt very, very alone. I've always, I've always felt like I haven't fit in anywhere. I don't know. It was real hurtful, like, I had organized a, a column for the, um, for the Guild Letter and asked Harriet Estelle Berman to write it, and she was all excited about it, and then she went on to syndicate her, the column, right? The Ask Harriet column. And after that, you know, after I wasn't part of MAG anymore, I run into her, she pretended like she didn't even know me. And I was just kind of, I'm like, really? Like, I've been to your house. It was just weird. I don't, I, I don't know. I never really fit into that group. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. I don't really fit in anywhere, do I? I don't know. I think we'll find out today if I fit in somewhere. I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. I've gotten along this far, 43 years, not fitting in anywhere. I suppose I can go another 40 if I can live, if I live that long. I don't know. Oh, I think I might need to walk with my stick today. We'll see. I might need to walk with the stick today. Because I'm hurting. Anyway. It's no fun walking with a stick. Mm -mm. It's not. You know, some days I can go roller skate. Some days I can do yoga. Some days I don't limp that much. Some days I can walk up the hill. Some days I can't. Some days I have to walk with a stick. I don't know. Dr. Milo in Oakland told me he thought I had fibromyalgia. I don't even know what the fuck that is, but that, he told me that like 10 years ago. What was it? Right now it's 2022. He told me that in 2013. He told me he thought I had fibromyalgia. Chiropractor told me I should go find a specialist that he couldn't diagnose because he was a chiropractor, but that he was treating me the way he treated all of his fibromyalgia patients. I don't know. Maybe I have fibromyalgia. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that some days it's hard to walk. Anyway. <laughs>